Hi, and welcome to my lesson 7.1 on writing and solving one-step inequalities. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to all this information here, but I want to return to what an inequality is. We have four different inequality symbols that you've seen in sixth grade, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, and when you graph them, you have open dots and closed dots. I'm going to jump ahead to example one, which is on page 204. I'm going to walk you through this stuff here on this page. Well, to solve an, equa uh, an inequality like this, it's just like an equation. If there's addition, uh, you would use the inverse operation. You would subtract 5. And I have x is less than negative 12 minus 5. That's negative 17. So all the numbers, so as opposed to an equation where x equals negative 17, this means anything smaller than negative 17 will work in our inequality. So if I have negative uh, 17 is over here somewhere, and if I pick, uh, let's see, oh, oh, if I graph it, I have the open dot right there, open dot, and less than over here. So a number smaller than negative uh, 17, like negative 20. If I put negative 20 in here, negative 20 plus 5, that's negative 15. Imagine that, negative 15. And negative 15 is smaller than negative 12. So that works. This is the solution, and this is the graph of the solution. For B, again, we would use the inverse operation. Instead of subtracting 3, would we would add 3. And that's zero. That's the whole intention of that. Copy the inequality symbol, and that's 11. So 11's over here somewhere. And it's greater than or equal to, so that would be our open dot. Uh, I should say 11 is less than or equal to y. OK, but still close dot. And I'll color that in. And then the numbers. So what number would fit in here? Uh, maybe uh, 12 would, because 12 is bigger than 11. It's opening to the bigger number. And I have that like that. Now, what number will fit in here? 12. OK, 12. Imagine I put 12 in here. 12 minus 3 is 9. And 9 is greater than or bigger than uh, 8. I could put 20. 20 is over here. 20 minus 3 is 17, and 17 is still bigger than that. So we have many solutions here that will work, and that's the difference between an inequality and an equation. Equation, it would just be y equals 11. Just one number will work, but here many numbers will work as a solution. So as we look at page 205 on the your turn questions, which are here, I'm going to cover this up here. So on the your turn questions, um, right there, solve and graph. Well, what we have is uh, this one. Again, inverse operation. I would add 5. And I get y is greater than or equal to. That's going to be negative 2. So all the numbers greater than negative 2. And I'll show you the solution to that. Looks like this. So we have uh, that. And the numbers greater than or equal to negative 2 go that direction. Make sure you color it in. Close dot. And for this one, we have uh, this. I want to isolate x. So since I'm adding 12, I would subtract 12. And 21 minus 12 is 9 is greater than x. So I will graph that. And that would be an open circle. It would look like this. So here's what I got, and I graph it. That number has to be smaller than 9. So all the numbers that are solution are smaller than 9. And the numbers smaller than 9 go to the left. That is a graph of our solution for our original inequality. OK, next. On example 206, now this gets to be the one tricky part about this. But first, 
easy stuff. If I have y divided by 3 equal, is greater than or equal to 5, that's just like an equation where we multiply these two here to get our answer, 15. This would be y is greater than or equal to 15. See? Super similar right there. Now here is the one difference in this one here. Still, if I have an equation, it would be solved the same kind of way. This is multiplication, so I divide by negative 4. These cancel. x is equal to, that's going to be positive divided by negative, <clears throat> is negative, and that 52 divided by 4 is 13. Okay, I'm going to, at this point, it looks the same. And these cancel, just like that's canceled. And I have x, and this is still negative 13. But here's the difference. I divided by a negative right there. And so when you divide by a negative, you have to switch the direction of the inequality. And you might be wondering why. Let me show you. At this point, I switched it. And oh. Was this, well, it might not be, or equal to. If I, now in this, I'm saying this works. So any number smaller than negative 13 will work here. Okay, let's see. Let's put it to the test. I have negative 4 and a number smaller than negative 13. Let's see. It shouldn't be so bad. So what is a number smaller than negative 13? A number smaller than negative 13 might be negative 15, right? Think about that. So I'll put negative 15 in for x. So negative 4 times x has to be greater than 52. And x could be anything smaller than negative 13, such as negative 15. And negative 4 times negative 15 is positive 60. And that is a true statement. See. The solution that I got from my answer here gave me a true statement when I plugged it back into the original inequality. Okay, let's say I didn't switch this, okay? What if I didn't? If I didn't, I would be looking for something bigger than negative 13. So according to this, my this is the wrong thing, but just trying to show you why you have to switch the direction the inequality is I now I could find something bigger than negative 13 hey I can make it easy what's the number bigger than negative 13 uh, 0 is so if I have negative 4 times X it has to be greater than 52 my original but I said well the number bigger than negative 13 is 0 okay negative 4 times 0 is 0 is 0 bigger than 52 no that's a false statement and I got it from my answer here, and I didn't switch the direction of the inequality. And you only do it when you divide by a negative right there. I didn't do it in any of these other problems here. So back to this, that confirms that, yeah, I need numbers smaller than negative 13 for my answer. More on this coming up. The your turn questions on the same page 206. Those are right here. So these two questions here I'm about to talk about right here. First, this is negative, time, negative 10 times y. So I would divide by negative 10 on both sides. And I cancel. But check this out. I divided by a negative right there. So y, it, I have to switch the direction of the inequality. 60 divided by negative 10 is negative 6. That is my answer. This one. I Oh, and you know what? By the way, if I had 10y is less than negative 60, let's say I had something similar to this, I would have to divide by 10. And the question here is, did I divide by a positive or a negative? I divided by a positive. Here I divided by a negative. But here I divided by a positive. And I don't switch the sign here. Y is less than negative 6. See, I switched it here, but not here. Because I divided by a negative here, and I divided by a positive there. 
even though I have a negative there. That, that's not what matters. It's what I'm dividing by. Okay, this one. I, you know, this negative can go anywhere. It can go on top, the middle where it is, or the bottom. And I'm going to put this on the bottom. It's going to make this a little bit faster to solve. Now, as I did, um, as I did here, I just multiplied these two. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply these two together. And when I multiply those two together, I have negative 42 t. Now here, I divided by a negative. Uh, I'm sorry. I multiplied by negative six right there. That's what I'm looking at. And since I did that, I have to switch the direction of the inequality in my answer. Let's look at a couple other scenarios that are similar to this. Let's say I had um, negative seven, uh, and I'm really, I'm looking at this here, negative seven greater than or equal to um, t over six. To, to solve this, I'm multiplying by six. A positive 6. So this, when I multiply these two together, it is negative 42, but I don't have to switch the direction of the inequality because I'm looking at this. And it's really, what is with the variable? Uh, a, uh, dividing by a positive 6 right there is with the variable. Multiplying by negative 10 is with the variable. So you're, I'm, I'm really looking at this right here. And this is telling me, oh, I got to switch it here. I look at this. I'm multiplying by a 6 to solve. So I don't switch it here. Uh, if I had, uh, what was it? But if, like I said, if I had this and I'm multiplying by negative six, I do have to switch it. And that's really the main difference between solving inequalities uh, and solving equations. You have to know when you switch it and when you don't. And finally, I have this submarine submersible. This is on page 207. Uh, uh, it, it descends more than 40 feet below sea level. As it descends from sea level, uh, the change in elevation is negative 5 feet per second. For how many seconds does it descend? Well, we have to know that uh, important information. The final elevation is 40 feet. Is final elevation is greater than 40 feet below sea level, or we can rewrite this as less than negative 40 feet. Notice right there. That's similar to dividing by a negative one. You know, you switch the direction of the inequality and you switch the sign of the number right there. These are meaning the same thing. And the rate of descent is negative five feet per second. We can write our inequality here. And I actually have two ways that I wrote this. The, the rate of change times time. Okay, the rate of change times the time, because it says the rate of change is negative five feet per second. It has to be less than that final elevation. And we said the final elevation was negative 40. And then we solve this. We, we divide by negative 5. These cancel. And uh, since I divided by a negative, right there, I have to switch the direction of the inequality. And your final answer, negative 40 divided by negative 5 is 8. So the submersible descends for more than 8 seconds. And I have this final one here every month. $35 is withdrawn from Tony's account to pay for a gym membership. He, he, he has enough savings to withdraw no more than $315. So we have $315 and what he can withdraw has to be less than. So this is what he's going to withdraw and it has to be less than or it could be equal to $315 because he could spend the entire $315. And he spends $35 per month. So 35M equals that. Okay. Uh, to solve this, I would divide by 35. So M equals, uh, I'm sorry, M is less than, so the amount of months he could spend has to be less than or equal to 315 divided by 35. And 35 uh, goes into 315. Well, that's zero times. 31 is zero, and I believe this is nine. Yeah, that's exactly 315. So M is less than or equal to nine months. So Tony can spend no more than nine months uh, of his money on the gym membership. Thanks for watching. That's what you gotta know about solving inequalities.